the genesis of the bridge project was our last field trip and we made that journey through the, the Williamson Community Leadership Program where you start off as strangers and by the end of the year you're basically family. And uh, one night after a few drinks, 36 of us crammed into a motel room and uh, started to talk about what we wanted to do at the end of the year. And there was a general consensus that if there was something that we could do as a group, because we had become so close and we were such a diverse group, we thought we could really end up delivering something quite powerful. We thought the need for young people, the main reason why they were reoffending was they were going back into the community. They didn't have a lot of support networks, but the other thing was they had this one piece of paper that was like a noose around the head, and that was their criminal record. Through my role on the Bridge Project, I was able not to bring my own individual skills, but also the broader skills of KPMG. So what we did with uh, the Bridge Project was to build a business case around the economic impact of the, of the program. So what we looked at was look at the cost of um, incarceration, that includes cost of prosecuting and keeping a young man in custody, and compare that to the cost of running the bridge program. And what we found was that over a period of five years, the bridge program could deliver over $29 million of cost avoidance, and thereafter about $8 million per annum. Well, I think partnerships and networks is what it's all about. So whether it's the, the you know, in this case we're talking about the Bridge Project and, and it definitely does bring diverse people together from um, all professional backgrounds and all walks of life. I think it creates the environment for, for networks and partnerships to happen. And then we as alumni, we actually become the, uh, the relationship breakers, I suppose. We've had a young gentleman from South Sudan here now for about eight months. He's a large gent, he's about six foot four, and as I said, he's from South Sudan. We have uh, some very passionate people in the workforce, and I remember looking out my factory window one day to see uh, one of the older employees chest poking him. Uh, he's about five foot three versus he's six foot four, obviously telling him something he was doing wrong. Um, by the time I got to the bottom of the stairs thinking this might lead to something else, the young man, rather than becoming aggressive or offended or taking offence, actually had his arm around this older, smaller Vietnamese gentleman asking him what he had to do to get it right. So to me it just proved that he had the right attitude, he actually wanted to improve and if something like that wasn't going to phase him where it phased me, <laughs> um, look, we were heading in the right direction and it was going to work. We've worked with 325 young offenders. We've provided 120 jobs and I've been able to provide the connections through Leadership Victoria and young leaders and businesses and be able to bring those people together to care about people that no one else cared about. That's what inspires me.